Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio from Science Buddies, and in this video, I'll show you how to build a paper circuit and talk about some of the common challenges you might encounter when building one. To build a basic paper circuit, you'll need paper, copper tape, a coin cell battery, and LEDs. Check out the link in the description below this video to find out where you can buy these parts. Note that you can also substitute aluminum foil for the copper tape, but since it doesn't have a sticky backing, you'll need more tape to hold it down. Paper circuits use paper, copper tape, and coin cell batteries to build circuits, instead of something like breadboards, wires, and larger AA or AAA batteries that you may be more familiar with if you've built circuits before. This makes it easier to integrate your circuit into an art project, like a painting or a greeting card. Coin cell batteries don't provide very much current, so it's generally safe to connect an LED directly to them without including a resistor. We have a separate video explaining that in more detail, linked in the description below this one. To make a basic paper circuit, you're going to need two traces of copper tape. The copper tape comes with a paper backing that you can peel off and then stick it to the paper. Try making two parallel traces with about a one centimeter gap in between them. At the end of one of the traces, leave some extra tape that is not stuck to the paper. Now, take an LED and bend the legs outward 90 degrees so you can put it flat on the paper. Put the LED down, and then you can use either clear tape or copper tape to stick it to the existing copper tape traces. I'm going to use clear tape for now to make it easier to see the legs of the LED. Next, you'll connect one of your coin cell batteries to the circuit. Before we do that, we need to talk about polarity. LEDs and batteries both have polarity, meaning they have a positive side and a negative side. The positive side of the battery is usually easily identified by a plus symbol. The positive side of the LED is indicated by the longer leg. You have to make sure you connect the longer leg of the LED to the positive side of the battery or the LED won't light up. You can see that here if I try reversing the LED. So when you connect your battery to your circuit, Make sure the positive side is connected to the copper tape trace that's connected to the longer leg of the LED. In this case, that's on my left. I'm going to put the battery down so the bottom connects the copper tape trace on the right, and I'm going to fold this trace over to touch the top. Now, when I press that down, my LED should light up, but you can see I'm encountering one of the common problems with paper circuits. I probably don't have good enough contact between my LED and the copper tape. You can see that I need to press the LED down firmly to make it turn on. You can address that problem by bending and pressing the leads of the LED until they have firm, continuous contact with the copper tape on both sides. Now you can see the LED always turns on when I press down gently on the battery, and I don't need to press down on the leads of the LED. If you want your circuit to stay on, you can use something like a paper clip or a binder clip to apply some pressure to the battery to make sure it makes good contact with the copper tape. Now, for an art project, you'll have to decide whether you want the copper tape to be visible. You could integrate it and make it part of your drawing or painting. If you don't want it to be visible, you can flip the paper over and poke holes for the legs of the LED so the circuit is on the back side of your paper. You can see I've done that here such that the center of my expertly drawn flower lights up when I press on the base of the stem. If I flip it over, you see that it's the same circuit I had before with the legs of the LED poking through and bent over to contact the copper tape. Now, if you'd like, you can easily make a slightly sturdier switch so you aren't dealing with a loose battery and an extra floppy piece of tape. Notice how here I have taped the battery down to the paper with some clear tape, so you don't actually need to make contact with the entire surface of the battery. As long as you leave a little bit exposed, it's okay. I've also folded the corner of the paper on about a 45 degree angle here, so when I fold this part over, this piece of tape is going to contact the top of the battery. This lets me make a little switch out of the paper where I can press on the paper instead of pressing directly on the copper tape. Finally, for some projects, you might want to use different color LEDs. This is generally fine as long as you connect the LEDs in parallel, meaning each LED should have one leg connected to the positive side and one leg connected to the negative side of the circuit. If you try connecting the LEDs in series, you won't get enough voltage from your battery to light them all up. However, you have to be a little careful about mixing colors. Each color LED has a different forward voltage drop. 
Since there are no external resistors to control the amount of current flowing through the LEDs, this means some LEDs might wind up being brighter than others if you mix colors. For example, here you can see that the red and yellow LEDs are noticeably brighter than the green LED. If I try adding a blue LED in parallel with these other colors, it doesn't light up at all, even if I double check to make sure I'm pressing down the leads of the blue LED hard enough. However, if I connect that blue LED on its own, it lights up just fine. What can you make with paper circuits? For complete written instructions, see the link to the Science Buddies website in the description below this video. For thousands of other fun, hands-on science and engineering projects, visit us online at www.sciencebuddies.org.